And when we have a chance to sit down and do our meditation, our sitting meditation, as you described, that's wonderful. But there's also another way to do this. And that way is what I call what truly comes from a lineage, you know, centuries of philosophy and principles that have been handed down. That is truly just certain practices that help us remain very present, aware, and balanced and rooted in life. So that when the winds of life come, you're not just blown everywhere. And that's sometimes exactly what happens. That's where stress comes, anxiety. That's where we get sick and life just becomes so overwhelming. And so that's what living meditation is. I'm Casey Maine, author, writer, and party girl turned spiritual junkie. And I'm dedicated to helping you better understand the most important and most complicated relationship you'll ever be in. The one you have with yourself. It's the only relationship that you're in for the entirety of your time here. And it affects every single aspect of your life. Yet it is the one most often overlooked. This podcast is here to help you explore that relationship. Get to know yourself so you can accept yourself, heal yourself, and become a better version of yourself. So let's get to it. Welcome back to another episode of the Better You Podcast. I am your host, Casey Main, and as always, thank you so much for being here. Whether you've been following along for a while or this is your first time tuning in, I very much appreciate it. I realized the other day, the podcast is about to turn one year old, about to have its first birthday. It was the end of July last year when I aired the first episode, and God, that just seems like so long ago. Like, it's incredible how many episodes it actually has been. And it's been more than 52, even though it's a weekly podcast, because for a while there, when quarantine was first starting, I was doing two a week and then that just got to be too much. And I thought quarantine would be ending soon. And boy, was I wrong, but yeah, so one year of podcasting kind of crazy, but I am very much enjoying it and I hope you are as well. So thank you again for being here. If you have not already, I ask that you please listen to last week's episode. It was a very personal one. It was one that I was very nervous to share. I have gotten some good feedback on it, but if you can open your mind and open your heart and listen to it, I would, I would really appreciate it. And I would appreciate and, and totally hear any feedback that you have, whether it's good or bad, or if you've thought of things I haven't thought of yet, if you disagree with things I said, or if you have recommendations for more of my self-education, whether it be books or movies or documentaries or whatever. I'm, I'm definitely in learning mode. And when you're in learning mode, you fully recognize that you're not always going to get things right. So last week was my first attempt of really kind of discussing my recent realizations regarding race and the history of this country and the privilege that I have and the white fragility that I have and just all the things. So again, if you haven't listened to that one, please check it out. And as far as what we have coming up, so we have some really cool topics coming up on the podcast in the next couple of weeks, we will be talking about numerology, super excited about that one. We will be talking about creating equality at home in terms of like divvying up the housework and the childcare. And then we're also going to have an episode on breath work coming up and then lots more cool stuff. So make sure that you are subscribed and following the podcast on the socials so you do not miss an episode. Super excited about today's episode though. I've always been, okay, well not always, recently as I've entered into this self-development, personal development, spiritual development phase of my life, been super intrigued by Eastern philosophies, Eastern medicine, like just there's so much ancient wisdom there. And, and some of it has kind of come over into our Western world. You know, like we do yoga, although I'm sure we do like a watered down yoga version in most studios, but there's a lot we still don't know. And there's a lot of incredible knowledge that has been around for ever that we don't necessarily incorporate into our lives or really just have the awareness. And it's, it's crazy. And, and I've noticed this as I, as I dive further into my spirituality, like it's, it's deep philosophical stuff, but then it's also like really simple. It's simple, but it's difficult to implement. So I was very excited to talk to today's guest. So let's go ahead and learn more about her. 
Dr. Janelle Kim is a master herbologist and the custodian of East Asian herbal formulations passed down directly within her family line for many generations. She is the first female in her lineage to hold the treasury of her family's formulas and the first to share them on such a large scale. As the American-born daughter of a Korean father and an American mother, Janelle learned from an early age the power behind the centuries-old medicine and principles passed down from her ancestors, the same principles that have allowed her to live a life of meaning and purpose. In order to preserve the medical history of her family and to further her love of medicine and her understanding of the human mind and body, Janelle received her doctorate in acupuncture and Chinese medicine. She is the founder and lead formulator of JBK Wellness Labs, a leader in cosmetic product formulation and design using traditional East Asian herbs and medicines, and creator of the world's first CBD luxury skin line. Merging ancient traditions with forward-thinking trends, JBK Wellness Labs have formulated some of the first all-natural luxury products carried in high-end spas across the world, including the Ritz-Carlton, the Four Seasons, and Mandarin Oriental, and in stores such as Whole Foods Market. And in this episode, we discuss her background with Eastern medicine and her work in manufacturing natural products, how the philosophy living meditation can be the answer to the problem so many of us have of not being able to find five to 10 minutes to sit down and meditate, the importance of having purpose, perspective, and gratitude. And then we go through the eight keys to incorporate living meditation into your life. This is a great conversation. I know you guys are going to enjoy it and get a lot out of it. And I do want to mention, since we talk a lot in the beginning about like natural products, that I have some of my favorites listed on my website. So if you go to caseymaincom slash shop, you'll see a lot of the products I use and some of them you can get discounts um, for being a listener of the podcast. So be sure to check that out and you can start to clean up your beauty routine. All right, that's it. Let's jump into this episode with Dr. Janelle Kim. All right, well, I really, I want to start with um, a little bit of your your background and your education and your experience and your work because you're really you're into some really cool stuff. So let's just start with a little bit of your story in particular. Absolutely. And thank you for that, Casey. Um, My story begins really from the moment I I entered into this earth, right? The moment I was born, um, I was a part of my life. Uh, This is what I'm speaking of is Eastern medicine, Eastern philosophy. I say that I speak on the three pillars, which is medicine, philosophy, and movement, all stemming from East Asian culture. But truly, I don't even love to make it East Asian, Western. To me, it's all just a principle and foundation of being human in this world, right? Um, in fact, we're not on video right now, but if you saw me, and for those that may know me, know that I'm, I am liter- a living example of that integration of East and West, right? My father's Korean, my mother's American. And so it's very important to me from, from the moment I entered in this world to really see it all and experience it all um, and appreciate it all. So growing up, uh, medicine in particular, as you know, I have a, a lab and we, we manufacture products using Eastern medicine and herbal medicine. So we're very well re- known in the manufacturing and personal care cosmetic world uh, for our expertise in that. So growing up, medicine and philosophy was, was such a part of my life. It was, it was my lifestyle, right? And so it wasn't even something that I consciously thought about often. But sure enough, moving quickly through my story, um, it was such a part of my life that when I entered into being a young adult, you know, I studied hard. I went to really strong academic type of high schools, you know, college academics was very important. And I was on my road actually to study Western medicine. And it was when I was about 19 years old, it kind of hit me. And it really was just like that. Of course, it's something I experienced my whole life, this medicine and what it did for people. I was able to see that my whole life, but it wasn't until I was around 19 that it just hit me that, you know, the world has to understand this. And I didn't see that, that it was very well known, at least in this part of the world. Um, But I saw it help so many people. So I kind of quickly made a decision. I found that oftentimes in life, that's the way it goes. (laughs) You know, it's not always the most comfortable position when you make these, these decisions, um, because it's kind of out of the ordinary, if you may say, but I knew that this was, I could feel deep down inside, this is 
this is my purpose. This is part of my mission in this life. And this is how I'm going to leave something really positive and wonderful in this world. And so that's how I kind of took off studying traditional oriental medicine. Um, I come from a long lineage of herbologists and doctors who I always love to take a moment to acknowledge that these, these doctors and herbologists in my lineage, my ancestors, basically dedicated their entire lives to understanding the human mind and body and how herbal medicine, you know, plants, botanicals as we know them, how they can really help to harmonize and balance our conditions so we could live the healthiest life possible. And so I'm very grateful every moment of my life to those who came before me. And so having that, that's kind of what I wish to bring into this world, that understanding of herbal medicine, how it can be applied in, throughout all aspects of our life, from food to supplementation to skincare. And that's how my, my journey began um, as a way to get it out to the world in a really understandable manner. Um, so I studied Eastern medicine, traditional oriental medicine. I went to Pacific College of, of Oriental Medicine here in the United States. Um, at the time, and I think still to this day, it's probably one of the most well-known, certainly very accredited, um, renowned university for, for studying Eastern medicine in the United States. But I've also studied abroad in East Asia and China at some of the you know prominent universities with some very renowned herbologists. Um, and so that's kind of my journey and my education and why I have, why I'm where I'm at today. Oh, I just, I absolutely love it because I it was probably a couple of years ago that I started to, I guess, kind of open my mind to like, all right, what are all the other like herbs and roots out there that are not part of our everyday life, but like, what are the benefits? And so I started, um, I started reading about it and then I started buying all these things online. And I mean, who knows, maybe, you know, buying them on Amazon is probably not the best <laughs> way to go, but it was like how I tiptoed into it. And so, Absolutely. you know, I had like, uh, the ashwagandha and the uh, right. copa powder and just all these things that are difficult for me to to remember the names of because they were hard to pronounce. But <laughs> it's just, it's sad when I, when you think about it, like how we here in the, in the Western, in the U S we don't, we don't integrate that as part of our, our daily health and wellness routine as much. But I feel like that's starting to change. Like, I feel like I've started to see a lot more of a shift to um, natural skincare lines, natural health and beauty products that's all using different plant-based and oils and seeds and roots and herbs. And so I'm hopeful, and you probably know more than me since you're, you're involved on in the manufacturing end of things, but that there is starting to become a shift to using products built from like what the earth is already giving us to take care of ourselves. Very much so, Casey. And I love the way you put it. And, and that's also certainly my wish and my want. And, and you're right. I think I've never seen it greater than I'm seeing it right now. Um, probably an extension of the story I just started, you know, explaining my story, that is, is that when I decided to, to study Eastern medicine, traditional oriental medicine, my, my initial dream was to have clinics right? Um, my great grandpa, which is what our lab is even, who, who our lab was even named after, Jin Bo Kim. That's why we're JBK Wellness Labs. You know, he was an, a very well-known and incredible practitioner. And certainly that passed down to me because I loved being in clinic. And that's what I thought life was going to be. And so I kept, you know, wholeheartedly, because that's all I believe, you know, you put your heart and mind into everything that you do, uh, was moving towards one day having clinics, you know, probably all over the world. I always thought big. And as life would have it, I kept getting kind of pushed, you know, in different directions that were not necessarily expected. Um, I say this because I think that's part of this whole path that you speak of, um, and hopefully the part that I have to do with it. Um, and so as life would have it, I kept being asked by certain doctors, uh, you know, for some of the, my family, my lineages, extracts, whether it's in skincare, dietary supplements. And then one day, one particular doctor came to me and said, particularly in the skincare world, she was a dermatologist. And she said, you know, Janelle, you really have to do something. You have to bring this out to the world. And so once again, I thought, okay, so I say that because this is about 20 years ago that this happened. And when, when I decided to take on this challenge, because <laughs> that's what it is, um, it was at the beginning of even the natural products industry, right, Casey? So uh, you will often hear me say, can you even imagine, because I love to take these moments, can you imagine a time where natural products were like not even really well known or looked for? You know, it doesn't, it's not even in my conscious mind, but there was a time and we kind of mm -hmm. fought through that door and herbal medicine still to this day, we're still, I think at the forefront of that, right? Oh, yeah. um, 
And so when I first began, yes, I, I kind of fought it a bit because my dream was to have clinics, but then I started to see, I changed my perspective, right? Okay, Janelle, let's, let's think bigger. What is your mission? You really wish to share these formulas with the world, something that's never been done before. Um, in fact, Casey, you know, I happen to be the very first woman in my lineage, certainly probably uh, one of the youngest to start <laughs> to start doing it at this, at, in this manner, you know, out to the world and treating people or putting out our formulas. So I take it very seriously. Um, and so when I started thinking of it in that manner, that this is a time that I can really send these formulas out to the world. And instead of looking at it like I'm I are hanging on to the idea of having clinics where I treat patients. Why don't I look at it like the world can be a clinic? And part mm -hmm. of that is exactly what you're talking about is that, you know, when we start to open our minds, there's more and more opportunities to share that. Like you said, having more people know about these amazing things that really truly help you to have the best, most optimal condition possible. That's how it all started. And so having said what I just said, kind of the the time frame, it took quite some time. Here I am 20 years later. And I have to say that there have been some shifts in, in the world right now where I have never seen the want um, and the movement towards integrating all types of medicine in all different ways um, stronger than I see it right now. And it is truly a wonderful thing. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. It's funny. I always kind of had a strange aversion to like taking medicine Mm -hmm. Um, like down to like when I was younger, if I would have a headache, like I would never just pop an Advil. Like I was right. just like, okay, let me drink water. So on some deep level, I, I think I just kind of knew there was a more natural way to go about it. But then just more recently, um, I don't know if you're familiar with the think dirty app. No, I'm not. This, I can't wait to see <laughs> app that you can scan like health and beauty products and it mm. gives you the ingredients and it kind of oh, reads I love that. them. Um, right. based on like toxicity. And so, right. oh, man, I like rampaged through my That's so important. product with that. Yeah. And so, I've and you probably were very uh, shocked and alarmed in not such a great way, unfortunately. Right, Casey? I That's was. And I, I, I guess I would think that, I guess we, we got away from using more natural means of taking care of ourselves once we started living farther apart and got into like right. mass production of things. But now I feel like, you know, whereas at first it was like, how do you mass produce, you know, herbs in, in a, in a sustainable and, and while maintaining their quality and their potency and everything. And right. then now I guess like the technology has finally, we we're finally at a point where we can marry the two. So you right. can have these more natural products that can be mass produced and shipped to, to people and lives, live on shelves of stores and stuff. Absolutely. And, and I think it, you're absolutely right that that is a uh, part of this whole, you know, piece, this, this puzzle that's being put together to a, just a much more powerful, it's really a, it's a movement is what I'm trying to say. But to me, this is, it really helps to empower people. I'm very into that. We hear that often, but to me, like, what does that mean? You know, I often will stop in all aspects of life. I'm sure we'll have this conversation a few times, <clears throat> even here together to stop, to think, what is, why am I doing this? And why this, is this so important? I feel like that's what's shifting as well, that people right now are looking to educate themselves more, to be more aware, to, to feel their, their condition that much more, especially during times where the world seems to be a little bit more in flux, if I may. Those are times that we really do, and I hear this all the time, particularly in the moment that we're in right now, that we can sit down, we have no choice sometimes, but we sit down, we reflect and become that much more aware of how of ourselves and, and our place and, and our relationships. Um, so yes, I definitely think that's a very key part of this is, um, the want to educate ourselves with apps. Like you say, I'm certainly familiar with many different organizations who do that. And I think it's a wonderful thing because right. So many times it happens that many people might even think they're getting a natural product and you look a little bit closer yeah. and that's just not the case, you know? And, yep. and the thing is we can blame people, we can point fingers, we can do everything we, you know, that can happen and be habits. But the most important thing we can ever do to empower ourselves and take control of our own lives is to educate ourselves and be aware, you know, and then of course find companies and people and, you know, teachers, mentors, whatever it might be to help us and guide us along that path. Cause it can be overwhelming. Absolutely. It, it can be. And I think another thing that's really kind of playing into this movement is, is finally, this took us a very long time, but <laughs> I think finally there's starting to be a, a much broader awareness of like that mind body connection. And yes. I mean, now you're getting into like, you know, you can find like just straight science on it of like what right. these certain chemicals and products are doing 
to our hormones, to our gut and that inflammation. And then what is that? How is that playing into your mindset and your anxiety and your stress and all this stuff? So um, that's really what led me into the more natural world was recognizing that, you know, the the lovely scented lotion I'm lathering on my skin every day when I get (laughs) out of the shower is maybe messing with my hormones and making me more moody or like more, Mm -hmm. um, you know, sensitive or whatever. And I'm like, I want to give my, my body and my mind, like the best chance of being in like a good place. Like, I don't want to be holding it back unnecessarily with like toxins. Like uh, you said it so perfectly, Casey, I talk about this often, especially because I'm so, you know, heavily in the skincare industry. Um, time and time again, I, I speak on exactly that. Even when it comes to our skincare, I say even when, but to me, it, that doesn't even exist. You know, so many times someone will just use the soap in the bathroom and they won't even notice, you know, while taking a shower or washing their hands. But every time you do that, you, you remember your skin is your largest organ. And then mm-hmm. we say that we all know this, but stop and think about it for a second. It's your largest organ. <laughs> it's part of the organs that make you function and stay alive, you know? And so, and I love how you put it. I love thinking about that. You know why I often get asked the question, why is it so important to use natural? It makes sense. We get it, but why? And, and my favorite thing is to make things just simply make sense. You know, that's honestly why one reason I, I do love studying Eastern medicine, Eastern philosophy to me, you know, I'm very much a person who loves to educate myself, be aware of everything around, but has always resonated with me. And I found over the years of the, you know, thousands of people, uh, maybe more that I have come in contact with, it does the same. It just makes sense. And to me, it's, I often will just say, you know, why is natural products important? Well, we're human and we live in a world that has tons of good and bad, right? And it's just the nature of all things. That's the yin and yang, if if I may, right? Mm -hmm. And so the nature of being human, no matter how wonderfully we take care of ourselves, the food we eat, the, the exercise that we do, you know, the meditation that we may practice, the calming practices, no matter what we do, we're human. And that means that we're always going to have, you know, good and bad things, toxins in our bodies that we have to balance with, and particularly with the outside world. And so to me, oftentimes I love to say, Every day when we wake up, even when we're sleeping, we have to constantly balance with our environment and we can't avoid it. There's nothing we can do to avoid the, the things around us that can be harmful. But what we can do is make ourselves as strong as possible to be able to balance with them, boost our immune system, increase our digestive system, our circulatory system, all of it, right? And so you can just imagine that your body is already working so hard and so miraculously at doing so. And then we simply keep washing our hands with tons of chemicals you know, put things on our Mm -hmm. face and our body filled with chemicals. We ingest things that we think are good for us, but they're filled with different fillers or, you know, again, certain chemicals or preservatives. And every time we do that, we just make it harder for our body. And to me, that's just the most simple way of thinking of it. Let's just stop making life difficult, (laughs) right? Period. On every level. It's difficult on its own. So control what we can control. (laughs) So I love that you said that. I, I think about that often. We speak on that often. Okay. Well, let's switch gears a little bit away from our our body and more to our mind, because I know you talk a lot about this concept of living meditation, and I believe you're going to have a book coming out, correct? Yes, that is correct. It's in the works. What is, um, tell us a little bit about living meditation. So as I've kind of already touched on, you know, to me, it's so important to make these to, to make these ancient philosophies, principles, medicine, all of these things that have withstood like the test of time, really. Okay. And that's why I'm really grateful. Like I said, I've had the opportunity in my life to experience and learn these types of principles and philosophy. And one thing I've found, particularly in this moment in time, kind of along the same topic that we're speaking of, people are just wanting to become more mindful and aware and broaden and expand um, in general, mind, body, all of it. And sometimes in my experience, I look at my, the people around me, even myself, and there's so much out there, so many wonderful things, tools to be able to help us in our daily life, particularly when it comes to meditation. I mean, now more than ever, do we hear about meditation everywhere? You know, I remember a time it wasn't so well known. It wasn't so understood, (laughs) you know, it's still kind of out there, but now it's everywhere you look. But the thing is that I'm noticing is that when we think of meditation, I mean, what do we think of, right? Casey, what do you think of when you, when I say the word meditation? So the image that pops into my mind, even though I know this is not accurate or is a very limited view is almost like the, the little emoji, the sitting in like Lotus position with your palms up, like being quiet and your eyes closed. 
Exactly right. And you know what? That's that's absolutely accurate and correct. There is a technique of meditation, many techniques, in fact, where you sit down, you find a quiet moment for 15 minutes, for hours, some people for days, you know, those who live in the mountains and are monks mm-hmm. in East Asia, for example, that's like life, you know, a whole life they do that. But the reality is that I have come to, to find and be taught is that sometimes it's not so easy to just sit down and do that. You know, I'm a mother of two young boys. I run multiple businesses. I'm very close to my family, to my friends, to my loved ones. I have this deep purpose that I, there's nothing you can do to try to break it from me. You know, I'm doing something positive in this world in any way, shape or form possible. And so I know myself, and this is my life, you know, talking about these Mm -hmm. things, meditation, medicine, that it's not so easy to sometimes find even five to 10 minutes to sit down to meditate. That's just the truth. You know, and maybe a lot of people aren't willing to come out and, and, and admit that, but I feel like it's necessary to, because what I'm seeing is there's so many wonderful ways and techniques. And certainly I am a huge proponent of all of them. There's no other way about it, but, um, I have found that I see people getting stressed out because they can't meditate. (laughs) Uh, The truth is there's even been moments in my life where I have felt that stress. And that is exactly the opposite of what meditation is. And as I was saying before, these are the moments where I think it's so important even to find a couple of seconds sometimes in all parts of life. But let's take meditation, for example, to sit down and think to ourselves, what's the purpose behind me even doing this? Why am I doing this? And why am I now getting stressed out about doing something that's supposed to be calming and relaxing? (laughs) <laughs> right? And so when you think about the purpose of what meditation is, you know, there's many different definitions, but to me in this moment, I would go so far as to explain that I believe meditation is a time of reflection, of having a moment where we are able to be aware of our mind and body of where we are in that very moment in time and try to quickly balance ourselves or maybe not so quickly, but we kind of have to sometimes balance ourselves in such a way that we're able to handle all that's happening around us. And it goes back to that same conversation because we cannot avoid life, right? We have Mm -hmm. to balance with it. And that's what meditation is. So if, and when we have a chance to sit down and do our meditation, our sitting meditation, as you described in like that emoji, that's wonderful. But there's also another way to do this. And that way is what I call what truly comes from a lineage, you know, centuries of philosophy and principles that have been handed down, that is truly just certain practices that help us remain very present, aware, and balanced and rooted in life. So that when the winds of life come, you're not just blown everywhere. And that's sometimes exactly what happens. That's where stress comes, anxiety, that's where we get sick, and life just becomes so overwhelming. And so that's what living meditation is. It's understanding the purpose of that meditation and and certainly finding moments to do those techniques of sitting, find that quiet time, but then also extending it into your daily life. That's the most important thing. Okay. I love that because it's kind of like it's taking the one of the main principles of sitting meditation, which is more that like present moment awareness, you know, whether you do that through a mantra, a guided meditation, right. focus on the breath, whatever it may be. And kind of, like you said, extending it throughout the day to be like, okay, am I aware of my thoughts, myself, my feelings? Like, do I have that self-awareness just in general throughout the day? But like, especially in those moments where it's so easy to maybe go into just total reactionary mode yes. versus, all right, let me just pause, like pause for a minute. Right now I'm, I'm big on the pause and I try and do that to myself all the time oh, to be like, so all right, pause and like, think about what's really going on before you just immediately react. So it's like, it's like spreading that out throughout the day. Uh, you said it again, Casey, I'm, I'm, uh, it's wonderful talking to you because you say everything so eloquently and beautifully. I, I completely resonate. I don't know about with, that. With I think it's saying. more like, simple. I, I yes. Simplify. Yes. But I, but that to me is elegant and beautiful. People can understand it. Um, you know, you and I had a second before this, uh, conversation and then I said to you, you know, to me, my greatest wish, you know, I'm not interested in, in having people remember my words and I'm so great at this and this is what I'm saying. I, my greatest wish is just all of these things that have been passed on for centuries. My wish is just make them applicable. Otherwise, what good are they? <laughs> I'm not here to hear myself talk or to read my own words. I'm not interested in that. Um, and certainly you are, you're doing a good job in saying that as well. But yes, as we were saying, the living meditation is making it simple, making it applicable, making it more of a lifestyle decision um, and pausing. You're exactly right. Something I think of often, and you use that word, and that's why I definitely wanted to call it out. You said the word react. 
And oftentimes it is as simple as even putting a word in our mind. Do we react or do we respond? There's a big difference, you know, and it can make a huge difference where you kind of set aside, you take a moment and you set aside certain emotions that can confuse or uh, tangle you in a situation that if you had even a split second, a couple seconds to sit down and pause, take a breath, you know, do a certain exercise if you can, or even just taking that simple one breath, you know, to kind of realign your body in that moment in time, even when Kids could be screaming around you, you know, things are happening at your workplace, you know, you're having a, uh, an argument with someone, you just take a moment to pause. And it's amazing what that can do. Reflect inside. The beautiful thing is people don't even know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, how, how, and how empowering, right, Casey, how empowering to know you can be in a tough, challenging situation. And even in that situation, you have the strength, you have the choice in that moment, period right? To even take a moment to gain that power within yourself, that freedom, that security, that confidence, that no matter what uncomfortable situation you're in, it will pass. And if you take a moment to realize it is my choice what to do right now, and then to really think deep. And like I said, root yourself. I think that's a really important piece to all of this. So you're not just blown everywhere. You know, I I will often use the phrase, be like bamboo, (laughs) which really sounds beautiful and profound. I feel that way. And I love that. Um, certainly this is a, a, a philosophy, a principle that's been passed down for many centuries in East Asia, but it's one that I speak of and think of often because why, why do we want to be like bamboo? Bamboo is so rooted. We know that, right? Bamboo, the roots, it's so hard to lift it. It travels. It, it's very difficult to uproot bamboo and it's so strong, not because it's so stiff, right? Like a stiff board, mm-hmm. you know, there's, it's such a funny thing in this life. And certainly I've experienced this too, being a young woman, you know, breaking into so many of these industries that so many people, how many times told me no, or it's not going to work or, you know, re-evaluating and changing, changing, pivoting, you know, to make things successful and find open doors. You know, sometimes it's easy to feel like we have to be so strong in a way that is unbreakable, you know, and there's moments that maybe that is accurate and correct. But in general, I think it's so important to remember that sometimes if you're too stiff, that's the balance of everything. That stiff board, if it's hit ever so perfectly or just the right amount, it'll break. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. But you have something like bamboo, which even when the strongest winds, the biggest storms come, because of its flexibility and its rootedness, that storm can come, the bamboo is flexible, goes all the way to the ground. And as soon as the storm passes, it bounces right back. And I love that. And it's something I think about all of the time in my mind. I picture it and it really helps me to make correct decisions in life, (laughs) you know, decisions that initially I may not, may not want to to act in that way, but I take that moment, think of that rootedness, think of that flexibility and the strength, when to do, when not to do. And that is how I think we can make life as, as wonderful as we possibly can. Ah, yes, I agree. All right. So let's, let's jump into, um, you've got these like eight keys, um, in terms of living meditation, but before we get into them, are, do these stem from a specific philosophy or are these kind of a culmination of several? I would say it's a culmination of several, you know, my mentor taught me principle and I remember being young and asking, what is principle? (laughs) What do you mean? It sounds wonderful, but what is the definition of a principle? And it was explained to me in many, probably different words than this, but the way I would explain it is a principle is something that's just not arguable. It's like a universal truth, right? Mm -hmm. Um, That's not, sure, anyone can argue with anything. This is, of course, the case, but but there's certain things that you just are not really arguable. They're human truths. They're universal truths. And so each of these eight keys are pretty much like eight principles that, like you said, kind of are a culmination an integration of many different philosophies, particularly from East Asia, I will say. But to me, you know, the beautiful thing is I, I say that because it, there's certainly, certainly a very strong foundation from East Asia. But the truth is how many times I've looked at many different cultures, uh, philosophies, it's all in there when you go down to that mm-hmm. foundational level, right? So I do have to yes. say that. But yes, I, they are. I love, I love that. And, and that's something I feel like I just kind of have this deep, knowing about that there are just these foundational truths within this universe, this life. And you can look at different philosophies, different religions. And if you get down to the core of all of them, like everyone's saying the same thing, they're just saying it a little bit differently. 
a hundred percent. And if something resonates with, with, with someone in particular, then wonderful, you know, but yeah. I think it's important to always go back to that root again, my favorite word for, for this time together and to go back to that root and really keep kind of just reminding yourself of that so that we don't get lost in the detail. Because that's, mm-hmm. I think, sometimes where it can be confusing, or we put our own emotions and ideas into things, and we can get away from that truth. And so these yeah. eight keys, I would say they're like those techniques, they're tools as part of that living meditation to help us in our daily life. That's what they're there for. They're there to help us. You know, it's not something to me, I was also always um, taught, you know, so important to the best of our ability. And again, this is something that I constantly practice, you know, stop memorizing don't memorize them. And that's really difficult, you know, especially when you come mm-hmm. from a, our modern world of academics, like I kind of mentioned, you know, that was also an important part of my life. I had no choice the way I was raised, you know, to study hard and, and to go to school and do the, but it's very linear, right? Mm-hmm. But it's just so important to open your mind that much more and understand that you have to have, I like to say there's kind of three things that I break it down, right? Um, I like these numbers because it makes it simple, right? And so I like, you have to have purpose in life, you have to have perspective, and you have to have gratitude. Those are my three points that without those three things, life would be very difficult at times. And that's just the truth, you know, Casey? So, (laughs) so yes. Okay. All right. I love it. Well, let's jump into them. Okay. So the first one is know your true self, Yes. which um, true self is definitely like a little bit of a buzzword in the personal development, spiritual development world right now. So yes. what, what is your definition of a true self? And like, how do we, how do we get to know that? Yes, I understand. And the, the answer is, you know, I don't have a definition per se, right? So before we even touch on all of these, I think it's so important to note that every single one of these tools, goals, whatever, whatever word resonates with us, they're not static. You know, I will never, I will speak for myself, but I'm pretty sure it applies to all. I will never, there will never be a time where I will call you and say, Casey, I've done it. (laughs) I found my true self. (laughs) It's just never going to happen as far as I'm concerned, but that's the beautiful part of life. It never stops. Um, And so knowing your true self to me and what I mean here uh, and trying to pick these words as eloquently as possible and, and as balanced and correct as possible is just really, like I said, broadening your perspective, being rooted taking a moment to pause, as we said before, to get in touch with our heart, to get in touch with what is the most important. And that's why I say the purpose and the perspective and the gratitude. So when you come to know your true self, it's a, it's a certain rudeness that you begin to feel where someone can't just come in and knock you over. (laughs) Right. Mm -hmm. But it has to be an open and expansive thing. It can't be stuck on details or opinions. It has to be part of that, that universal truth of looking inside yourself, constantly purifying to me, that's another part I didn't mention before. Meditation, in one way, you could talk about it as a purification, right? You're constantly cleaning yourself. I say just just as much as if we walked into a room filled with, you know, chaos. There's the sheets are not done. Your bed isn't done. There's clothes everywhere. You know, whether someone lives that way or not, I think everyone would agree this looks a little bit disorganized. Well, the same thing can happen inside, and so it's so important to constantly purify ourselves to see what's important to us, to know what it is, our purpose that we wish to have in life. What is our, what are our priorities? And to me, that is knowing uh, the process of knowing your true self. You have the choice at the end of the day, you have the choice to make a good decision or a bad decision. You have the ultimate choice and that is knowing yourself. Yeah. So I had like a little kind of just aha moment when you, when you joked about like, you'll never call me and say, I've done it. I know my true self. Yes. And I think even that is a hard concept for our brains because our brains are wired like to be, or maybe it's just, maybe it's more how we're, how we're brought up and how we're taught. But it's like, we look for these definitions of things and this, you know, either, or, and things are supposed to fit in this box and there's categories and all this stuff. So even kind of the concept of just a like a fluid true self and like this concept that you're never going to reach it it's more something you're just always striving for I think that's really hard for us to like wrap our minds around it certainly can be it's not always comfortable in 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 the beginning um something that though everything is rude and on that I'm not even sure I mentioned yet which 
is interesting, but a lot of all of this stems from something uh, that is known as the Tao. I'm sure you know about this, Casey. I'm not sure if it's so well known uh, in, in our world, in our culture. Mm -hmm. But it's the Tao, right? And the Tao is the universe. And so just as you described it, that's how I would describe it. It's a, it's kind of the universal truth of life and it's always fluid. It's always changing from the Tao came yin and yang, right? It's that, mm -hmm. that picture that we, that symbol that we all see. And it's always changing. If there's one constant life, it's change. And you, you hear that in many different philosophies, um, over, you know, whatever centuries, Western, Eastern, and so it's that constant balance, as you said, that constant fluidity. And that is exactly how, you know, in my humble opinion and what I have seen kind of withstand the test of time, particularly in East Asian culture, where they have existed for quite some time. That's exactly, that's exactly right. It's a very fluid, it's never ending. It's a constant practice. Our whole life mm -hmm. is, you know? And so, yes, I think that's important to note. And it's not always comfortable because it's much more comfortable to know where we are, where we're going, what we're going to do. But the reality is how often does that actually happen in life? <laughs> that everything right. we think or we want just goes our way. It doesn't really work that way. Um, and it's funny because it's such a fine line where some of this can seem almost daunting, you know, but you have to take it a step deeper than that, if I may, um, lighten it a bit, maybe soften it a bit. And it doesn't have to be so daunting, but it's just the reality. <laughs> to me, I love um, the East Asian philosophies, the principles. Um, because they really do just go down to, like you said, just makes it kind of simple. But sometimes simple means it's a little bit black and white, but also you have to find the gray in it. So now that's where it gets a little bit more confusing, but that's the fluidity of it all. So, yeah. And, and I would say too, that like when it comes to applying this to just everyday life, and this maybe depends on kind of the people in your world and who you surround yourself with, but I've always lived in this world where, you know, there's all this pressure about, um, at least like when I was working in more of like a corporate job, you know, you've got these set goals and budgets and here's the plan and the strategy and everything. Like there is no fluidity. It's like, we sit right. down, we decide what we're going to do and that's it. And then even as I got more into the personal development world, you can find that there as well. Yes. You know? so I love that you create, say that, Casey. It's so funny, yeah, right? And you're like, wait a second, is this happening and, again? <laughs> yeah. Make your goals. And if you don't have a goal, like the smart goals, and if you don't know where you're going, like how will you ever get there type thing? And, and, and it's really hard then to, to kind of look those people in the face or kind of butt up against that advice and be like, well, actually, like I believe in fluidity and like going with the flow. And so right. like, how do you, how do you stay true to, to that kind of fluidity concept? Like while, while running all the businesses that you do, like, is that a right. struggle for you? Um, it's certainly, you know, it's becoming more and more a part of my, my life, but it's always going to be a challenge, you know? And, and that's why I, again, I go back to that visual, be like bamboo. I think it's so important because you're right. Everything ends up wanting to be an extreme, you know, either you mm -hmm. let everything go and you just are free spirit, or you're on the other end and you have to have all these goals and everything's very linear, but balance comes from both of those things. Uh -huh. And to me, the most important way to be able to be fluid and to pivot, because in my life, the success that my husband and I have achieved even thus far in our lab you know, in the skincare world and the personal, personal in care uh, world, that is in all of these industries is that we have to constantly pivot. So how do we do that? And I like that you even bring career because it is a much more black and white situation. Mm -hmm. So in all aspects, that's where, as I was just saying, it's like bamboo, you always have to stay rooted. That's the most important thing. And that root comes from yourself, knowing yourself, right? And so always being aware, checking in with yourself. Am I in a grounded place? Am I making certain judgments that, I, that are clouding my vision? right? Am I holding on too tight to a goal? That's a very funny one because I tend to be a very strong, independent woman. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure you are as well, Casey. And I know very many of us, you know, woman, man, the same principle applies, but it's very easy to set your mind on something and just move towards it, you know, do everything mm -hmm. possible to attain that gold goal. But I have found, you know, as the years progress and I have more experience under my belt, that sometimes it's, it's always important to be rooted and have goals. hundred percent. That's why purpose is one of my three main things. <laughs> what is the purpose behind what I'm doing? But it is so important to constantly check in to make sure, like I said, that we don't have certain emotions that are clouding our view, that we don't have certain judgments, that we're not holding on so tight to an, to a, an idea or a detail. And 
actually holding ourselves back from where we're truly supposed to be. I actually gave an example when we first started speaking. Had I held on to what I thought was my ultimate goal and wish in this life to have clinics around the world, I would not be near where I am right now at all. Mm -hmm. And I would not have been breaking down the walls and the, and the doors as, as, I, as I, my greatest wish, and we have certainly started to do with my lab, of, of opening these doors and having more and more people understand this medicine and philosophy. It never would have happened. It would have been so much more limited had I held on to that too tight. And I think that's the really important part just to check in and be aware and to make sure that all of the choices in this life are up to us, it's no, up to nobody else. <laughs> they certainly can influence us, you know, um, good and bad, the people we love, the situations we find ourselves in, especially as a parent, I find this, you know, or in relationship um, with, with um, our, our company. But it's just so important to be rooted and to check in this, this is the bottom line where, what is our purpose behind what we're doing? And it just helps to clear and purify your space and your mind so you can make better decisions, not just for yourself, because I do believe that in this life is very important without us, without our health, without us, we don't even exist, of course. But if you do not connect with those around you, if you do not have a greater purpose, you know, I don't always come off this strong, but I guess today it's happening, Casey, that I just wonder, <laughs> well, what are we doing here? You know, what's our point? Right, right. <laughs> so it's important to go there, whether it sounds extreme or not. And, and that kind of brings it back to also, I love that, that kind of like check in and make sure, you know, check in with the rootedness and make sure you're, you're being true to you and, and that, you know, we're making all the choices and stuff. And that goes back to what we were talking about earlier. Like you've got to have that element of pause, like throughout your day for those little check in yes. moments, because otherwise it's all too easy to fall into one end of the pendulum, whether it be Absolutely. like, oh, I got to sit down here and I'm going to plan out the next five years of my life and then boom, stick to it. I'm done. Or Absolutely. the, oh, well, everything's fluid. I'm going to go with the flow. And it's like, I don't, right. I don't agree with that either. Cause then there's yeah. no root. There's no set, you know, it's important to be grounded in this life. That's, that's just the truth. Yes. Okay. So the second one is make correct daily choices. So talk yes. a little bit about that one. Yeah. And the beautiful thing, as I think we're experiencing together in our conversation right now, is they kind of lead into each other. They all mm -hmm. relate, right? So we're kind of already, we kind of already touched on this. So it's kind of another tool in helping ourselves know our true self and relating to the world around us. So this is one that I think is really important because it goes into, and this could be like a whole series, Casey, <laughs> yeah. you know, so clearly we will make this shorter, but it just goes into understanding or being aware of when you go to make decisions, whether it's a true a right or a correct decision, you know? And so that's not something I think is a, is a commonly heard uh, practice or process, but it's one that is very important. And that means that in every given situation, it is again, you know, in the beginning, sometimes it takes a little bit longer, right? Like when we're young, we have to learn how to walk and that's a whole process. But now, you know, for most of us, we stand up in the morning, we walk, we breathe, whatever you think, whatever part of your life that you don't really think about too often, this kind of can be the same way. In the sense that in the beginning, if you're not used to this, and or or maybe just certain times in life, you have to stop in and spend a little bit more time on this. And, and more time to me means maybe a couple minutes, because we don't have time to sit down and think about every choice. You know, it just yeah. doesn't work that way. <laughs> and I really don't want to make it seem that way. But it, we have to constantly reflect upon this, process this. You know, while I'm brushing my teeth is a moment where usually my kids are not screaming at me and I can't really talk on the phone. <laughs> so I have like a couple minutes to think about these types of things. So true, right, and correct. It's just a matter of having certain choices in your life, depending on the situation that you're in. You know, there might be a, a true decision in life, meaning there's something in a given situation and, and what is the truth behind it? Well, if I do this, it is true that this happens. Okay. That makes sense. But that doesn't always lead you to the most correct decision, right? Then you have right. This is one that I think is very important in our, in our, in our modern day world and life particularly with relationships, right? When, when let's say uh, a family gets in an argument together, okay, a brother and sister, siblings are always so close, but it's pretty, pretty well known that they can get in arguments and it comes down to you're right or I'm right. You know, really when it comes down to something so important, a very important relationship, for example, I think that's the easiest way to see these three choices. Just because someone, what's the point of right in that situation, right? So so you're right. I'm right. I remember being raised knowing, okay, what's, who's going to win here? Why do you want to win? <laughs> or when it comes mm -hmm. to a parent and child, I was certainly raised that way. 
what is your point right now? Do you want to, is it, is it so important to you that when you win this conversation and you come, what are you going to win at the end of the day? You want a prize? You want a cookie? What is your point? <laughs> you know, so it comes back to really rechecking yourself and coming to a correct choice. The ultimate goal is coming to a correct choice. And that's a balance of what is true in a given situation, what is right in a given situation, and what is the best decision for all involved. And that's really the, the simple way of breaking it down. We always want to arrive to that correct choice, that correct decision, because, because this word correct, at least to myself and what I hope will resonate and make sense to everyone, is that's the most balanced decision in any given situation that you find yourself in, whether it's in business, as you mentioned, you know, there's times where something might jolt you. You didn't expect to have this with a client or, or your employer in that moment in time, you have to stop and think, pause, as you say, look at the whole situation and then go to make the correct decision. One that's not necessarily rooted in emotion, but one that's rooted in the best for all. Okay. Okay. So is it kind of like, all right, so, cause it's a balance. The correct choice is a balance between true and, and right. Right. Is that right? That's exactly correct? right. <laughs> okay. Yes, that's so correct. <laughs> See, true. now we're even thinking yeah. of these words. <laughs> what's true is like, what is it? What's true for me as an individual? Yes. Or like what's, what's true just is like fact. It can be, it can be either, you know, um, in the sense that it's a more limited, true and right are more limited, right? So that's why if you are more limited decisions, more limited viewpoints, perspectives, right? So Mm -hmm. it's how you feel about something in that moment in time, right? Or it could be a fact. The fact is this, well, just because something is a fact doesn't necessarily mean that if you apply it in that given moment in time, it's going to be good for everybody. That's what I'm trying to say, right? So, um, it's a fact that for example, okay, I'm a parent. It's a fact that it's probably really good for me to sleep for eight hours a night. Sure. That's a fact. Studies have proven this. That's a wonderful thing to think about. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And, and so then you come to a situation. My kids are, are my, my son, let's say he's three years old. He's scared to go to bed. Right. And he's in the room screaming and crying. So what is the true moment in this? Okay. The truth is as an adult studies have shown, I should be sleeping eight hours. That doesn't really ever Mm -hmm. happen, but that's the truth. So if I only went by that, that's a pretty limited. So what am I supposed to do? Leave my whole family, (laughs) you know, have them fend for themselves. I mean, of course, this is an extreme situation, but sometimes it helps us see, right? So I'm going to go off to bed because the truth of the matter is mommy needs to sleep for eight hours. So you guys just have to figure it out. Okay, clearly that's not a very balanced decision. So in that moment in time, we already naturally do all these things. We take a moment. Oh gosh, I'm, I'm very, very tired right now. There's no way I go to bed at eight o'clock. That's like a joke. (laughs) I don't think that'll ever happen. But I think to myself, okay, although this is a true, true fact right now, of course, I'm going to go and check on my son, make sure he's good. Right. And then let's take that down a little bit further. So the right, what is the right thing to do in this situation? Okay. Well, the right thing to do in this situation, because I want my son to go to bed is to force him to go to bed right now. Right. And so I want you to lay in bed. This is the right thing to do. I don't care if you're three you know, (laughs) you're just going to listen to mommy. And even if I have to strap you down, you're going to stay in this bed. Okay. Well, obviously, like I said, this is an extreme example here, but Mm -hmm. you can see where in life, if we hold on to the truth of, of a given situation, although it's not the best in that current, you know, moment in time, it's not the correct decision to be made the right decision. It's right for my child to go to bed, but I'm not going to force him to go to bed. I'm going to probably create a whole bunch of issues <laughs> and we're going to probably argue and fight even more so together because, because I'm trying to hold on to this right thing to do as a parent. Well, it doesn't always work mm-hmm. that way. So then you kind of combine the two, right? So right now, both of us, it's true that we both need to go to bed. The right thing to do might be to, on one hand, strap you down. The right thing to do might be depending on your situation. And that's where we have to sit down and think of what is the correct thing to do in this manner in this moment in time. Okay, well, I'm going to get up from bed. I'm going to go check on my son. I'm going to sit down with him, maybe talk through some of what he's feeling, which doesn't always work. And maybe in that given moment in time, maybe sometimes I can tell that my son is just throwing a tantrum. And maybe I will be a little more strict. Right now, you have to stay in bed. Sorry, honey. But I have to tell you just last night, this is why it's on my mind. I clearly saw he was really afraid. For some odd reason, that evening, he's crying. He's like, kind of like really breaking down on me here. So I figured, okay, this, in this moment in time, I can clearly see that my, my child is distressed for whatever reason. I'm going to take him into my bed. We will lay here together, have a calming moment together, you know, and then after he falls asleep, I will put him back into bed. And we did that exact thing. That was the correct decision in that moment. And he slept through the night and everything was fine. 
right? So I hope that's a clear way of understanding. This can be applied to anything, you know, a yeah. husband and wife, a friend, a business. I, I love that. And I love that you use a parenting example. And while I am not a parent, I, I see in, in my siblings and parent friends that I have that there is a lot of selflessness sometimes. And, and yes. so I think it's, and, and I think you come up against this, okay, what's true for me, what's right for the child, what's right for me, kind of conundrum a lot. So yes. just, I think even like the awareness of that, like, again, that kind of that pause of like, okay, what's true for me? All right, well, like I need to get some sleep too, or I need to spend some time with my significant other or, right. um, you know, whatever it is that is true for you. And then like, what's right for the child. And then the correct choice probably lies somewhere in, in the middle of that, like the balance of those two, not completely foregoing your own needs for what's no. right with the child, what's right for the child or vice versa. That's exactly right. And again, it's not a static place, you know, and that's what I mm -hmm. said that there are some, there are some moments in time where there's a certain, the true and the right come together to make this, you become aware of the whole situation, what's best for everyone involved, you know, the responsibilities of those involved, the the, the goals of what we're trying to achieve. And, and that situation could change on a daily basis. That could, situation could change. One day you could mm -hmm. do it one way and the next day you might do it another way. But because that everything is constantly changing in that manner and we have to balance with that. Um, right. And so you're exactly right. And that's why you'll see that that tool is make, this is, this is one that it certainly takes more time, as I said. Um, they all do, but this one in particular, because it's just a different way of like a framework for our mind. Um, of mm -hmm. course, it's fluid, but it's helpful to think of it that way of almost this process, because we do like to hold on to those things. <laughs> so let's hold yeah. on to this process of almost a fluid, fluid um, way of life, right? And so we call this, I call this the moral compass. So it's almost like a compass that we can find our way by looking, by just being aware of, of that's how we can come up with certain decisions that are important, you know, when we're finding ourselves in an overwhelming or challenging time or just period. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, because it does kind of give a process because our yes. brains sometimes love a process, but this it is true. Is we're not going to fight it. Yes, that's right. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with the process so long as it doesn't make us limited. Right. Okay. So then that brings us to the third one. Do not limit yourself with your own thoughts and beliefs. I absolutely love this one. Talk yes. a little bit about what that means. That's exactly kind of what we were just touching on. So it keeps moving forward in our conversation, which is beautiful. So yes, just like I was saying, the most important thing is that we, like I said, the three important things, purpose, perspective, and for me, it's gratitude, right? Being connected to everything around us and being grateful for that. So this has everything to do with perspective. It's so easy for us, whether that is stemming from a want of pride or insecurity or our feelings of being too attached to some idea. It's so important. And it's not something you ha always have to run around. You know, this doesn't mean you have to go and, and just blurt out and express everything that you're feeling all the time or being, you know, completely not having your own, you know, uh, way of thinking or, or, or set character that th doesn't mean this is not extreme in that way. But it's just really important to always be aware of your own thoughts, your own words. Everything counts. You know, I was raised really kind of strong that every word matters. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. of course I've lived with balance with this, but it's something that I'm, I constantly carry with me. And it is a really important piece in my life. You know, even when I'm, when I'm having certain mostly obviously important conversations, but it carries through, you know, every word that comes out of my mouth is almost uh, should, there should be some kind of stem of purpose, you know, it just makes us think through things a little bit more expansive and a little bit more mm, aware and mindful right? So it's really important to not limit ourselves with our own thoughts and beliefs. In Korean, there's a word for that. It's called dochi. <laughs> and I love this. I don't always bring in all the, uh, the words because it's that much more for us to understand, but I don't think there's another, there's not a word for it in our English language. How it's translated is that you're drunk on your own thoughts. It's like yeah. we literally, when you're drunk, you don't think clearly, right? Uh, that's just the case, right? We'll make different decisions that we normally might not make. You know, we might become more emotional about something that doesn't really make sense. And in, in, another, in another time looking back, or other people might look at us like, what are you talking about? It's just drunk. When you start mm -hmm. to be, it's very important for us to always remember not to be drunk or limited by our own thoughts. You know, do not let ourselves limit our own thinking and our relationships and what it is that we can achieve in this life. And I do think that this is a really huge one for all people. It's, it's something that we constantly have to watch ourselves with. Um, and is very important. Absolutely. And I think this is, I, especially 
important right now, given everything that's that's going on, that the concept of of, of gaining more more perspective, I just think is so key to like not be so close to our thoughts that we think that they just are like they're the norm they're right they sh- you know unquestioned all of that but kind of creating enough space to really look at them and then try and widen your view out a little bit to include other perspectives i i just think that's that's so key do you have advice for people on how to go about gaining more perspective certainly as uh, and one way that i can explain this Another aspect, maybe I'll start here, Casey, is it's so easy in life to make excuses, right? To blame other people for different things, for example, right? And this is another way that that by by when we do limit ourselves or become almost drunk on our thoughts, so attached to something, we have a tendency to do that, right? So you and I know another important philosophy that I stand that I truly stand true to is, you know, if we have time to blame others or make excuses, use that time to look at yourself. It's such an empowering thing, you know, it is selfless, but at the same time, it's so self empowering. It's a beautiful thing, right? So, so one thing that the one way I like to visualize it is wearing sunglasses, right? And again, this is more of an extreme um, example, but I think it gets the point across. And I actually put this on my website because I like it. So if you're wearing sunglasses and you're wearing them all day and night and it's your choice, you put them on, (laughs) you're not taking them off, but then you walk through the evening and can keep complaining that everything is dark. (laughs) Gosh, Mm -hmm. it's so dark right now. I can't see anything. Well, how often do we actually see this in ourselves and in others, right? We'll just Mm -hmm. take them off. (laughs) What is the big deal? Take the sunglasses off. Why do you have to be wearing them right now? It's such a funny thing. So it's, it's a whole understanding of in order to see ourselves clearly, we have to see that we have the choice to change our reality, our own reality. We have that ability and that choice to remove those sunglasses, whatever is holding us back or making us see a limited way or not being able to open our perspective. And again, this can be something that happens inside. It's not something you have to tell everyone that you're doing. So it can be a very private, almost sacred process. But, but in the end, everyone feels it from you, that positivity, that expansiveness, that perspective right? So for example, when someone is kind of stuck in a moment where they just cannot break free from it, wearing those sunglasses, no matter how much you complain, no matter how much you have try to have make others change around you, at the end of the day, nothing will change until you look within yourself, right? Mm -hmm. And you make that decision. You change your perspective. You look at it from a different, different way. And that's how that's how you can see life clearly. And this all, uh, pretty much everything we're speaking of right now, I, I keep hearing myself say the word clearly, seeing clearly, you know, because mm-hmm. when we can see clearly, the world is just so much more beautiful. You know, we're able to connect with people more. We're able to feel ourselves more. It's just about, right, kind of wiping away all of the, the dirt and the disorganization and the chaos in our life. Yes, I, I love that because you're right. Like we, we have the choice of, of the lens of which we view the world. Like we, we choose how we see it and people can kind of fight that at first. But when you really think about it, I mean, that's why we have sayings like, you know, the glass half full or half empty. The whole thing is like, we're, we're choosing how we, how we view situations, how we view others, how we view ourselves. And we have the power to change that at any time. It's not easy. It's not always easy, but it can be done. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. It can be, and it's, it's almost necessary to be done if we truly do want to live a life filled with purpose. And, you know, the day we leave this earth, looking back and thinking, you know, that was okay. We did pretty good. (laughs) You know, I don't have tons of regrets. Okay. So then the next one is become a legacy of goodness. What, um, what is meant by that? So I will, you know, I don't know how much time we had today, Casey, and I know these take a little bit of time. So maybe I can even combine, if you'd like me to become a legacy of goodness and seeking the face of honor, which is sure, the, fifth yeah. key, the fourth and the fifth, right? So these kind of, they all relate, but these two in particular really just comes from that, that understanding of the purpose. You know, what am I doing here? Why am I here? And my favorite thing, as we mentioned, uh, you know, just a bit ago is, you know, it doesn't matter. You can have any belief system, religious belief, you know, belief system or not, you know, it's really the beautiful thing is this can apply to all people, no matter what. And it is a moment that you just sit down and think about what is my purpose of being here? And I think that's a really important thing to check in every once in a while. And it can, and it can, and it can change sometimes, but, but at the very core, you know, I often... Mm -hmm. 
will say and feel inside, you know, one day when I leave this earth and I do this, I'm doing it right now. I close my eyes and I think this to myself. One day when I leave this earth, you know, people may not remember my face. They may not remember my name, but what is it that I'm going to do in this world? What, what positive, what, what thing am I going to leave behind to add to this world, to my time here? You know, so one day when we're not here, uh, that's a given. One day we're not going to be here. Our physical body, whatever our beliefs are, we're not going to exist in this manner. But what is it that we will have left behind, whether people know it or not, that made this place better, our time here worthwhile? And that's what becoming a legacy of goodness is. You know, thinking of the good seeds, I like to say, that we leave behind for all future generations, whether that's our children, whether it's the things that we do in this life. What kind of seeds do we leave behind? Are we going to leave behind good seeds that will grow into something? Or do we leave behind, as I as it seems a little strong, but my mentor used to teach me, or do you leave behind rotten fruit that just kind of rots and doesn't do anything? <laughs> and mm-hmm. this doesn't have to be huge things. You know, this can be very simple. And I think that's really important in life, you know, just being kind to others. I mean, that's not a simple thing. That's a huge thing. But that can be make make such a difference in this world. You know, something I always always uh, liked a a phrase that I learned from my mentor is one match to light a thousand. And I just love that. You know, to, if you visualize that literally you can have a thousand matches and light one and then a cut in a split second, they can all ignite, you Mm -hmm. know? And to me, that's such a beautiful thing because I certainly, it might sound corny and cliche, but ever since I was young, I really believed I can do something in this world. We can change the world, (laughs) you know, and I will never stop no matter what anyone tells me. Because I really believe in that one match the light a thousand, leaving behind those good seeds, becoming a legacy of goodness. And that word legacy is very thought through, as we talked about before, the words. That's a very thought and purposeful word, because when we leave a legacy behind, there's something that's left of what we did in our time here. Um, And that certainly leads us into the seek the face of honor as well, right? Where everything uh, is kind of stemmed from that as well. To me, honor means respecting others. In, in everything that they're doing. Like, so it's a certain, uh, to me, honor is as driven by love and respect, right? And mm-hmm. so when you kind of combine that being, uh, leaving behind a legacy of goodness, treating others kindly and knowing and always thinking of that connectedness amongst each other. Um, it's the age old, you know, treat others as you would want them to treat you, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. And so those two kind of, they all relate, but particularly those two. It's just another way of really digging deep and being rooted. Yeah, I, I love it. I especially love the analogy of, of the seeds because I think that's something you can easily kind of keep with you in the back of your mind throughout the day. Be like, all right, well, what kind of seeds am I spreading around right now? Yes. You know, in big decisions or everything from, you know, as simple as how you're how you're treating or interacting with the grocery store clerk as they're right. checking out your groceries, you know, or you, you better believe it. Do you look yeah, like cause I notice this with myself. I'll get in autopilot mode and then I'm not even making eye contact with people or acknowledging sure. that they exist. And I'll catch myself be like, see, like, this is a human across yes. from you. Like, look at him or her, say hi, mean it, ask how they're doing. Like those little things. I think that's, again, it's just kind of that bringing that awareness and those check-in points throughout the day. I, I love that. That is, that is living meditation, Casey. What you just said, mm-hmm. it's checking in, you know, and it can be just like that. Literally, you're ready to put your card into pay and you check in for one second. And then you, you choose to make a decision to say hello, hello to someone genuinely, you yes. know, and right there, you can feel it. You can feel it right in that moment when you truly make that choice to even say hello to someone, that positive energy, you know, that mindfulness, that awareness makes a difference your whole day. It just yeah, does. And that, and that connection, that connection yes, with, certainly. with other people. Yes. Yes. That's exactly okay. right. Okay. Okay. So moving into the next one, change your reality for the better. This is another one um, right. that I really love. And I think is talked a lot about But I think a lot of people still have resistance to it because there's a lot of focus on the external of, of, you know, reasons why, or I, you know, maybe so far as to excuses, um, on why their life is, is a certain way. Right. That's exactly right. And, um, again, one thing that I, I have learned, um, and certainly as a principle that has withstand, stood the test of time, maybe not in these words, but, you know, it's really important to understand and it goes with everything we were just saying, you know, limiting yourself, kind of locking yourself into wherever you are at that moment. And then remembering that just like a flip of a switch, it's that quick. You can make the choice to change your own reality because no one can do it, but you, you know, Mm -hmm. a lot of these things are sometimes hard because it is a very responsible 
you know, you, you, you carry all the responsibility and that's not always easy <laughs> in life. You know, wow, all of this really does involve me. It is my choice, not involve me, but in the sense of it is my choice to do, to make my reality better. It is my choice to react to a situation this way. It is my choice to use these words versus these words. It's my choice to argue right now. It's my choice to sit back. I mean, all of these things. So it is so important to remember that our reality, meaning the, the life that you are finding yourself in right now, you can change that. And if you're in a place that you're not happy with, you know, and, and this is something that we can, we hear sometimes, but hopefully these tools make it that much more of a, a reality for us <laughs> to be able to change. But when you, if you find yourself in a situation that you are not comfortable or you do not like, no one else can change that except for yourself. And it's mm-hmm. really important to take a moment to remember that, you know, and, and oftentimes, as you, as you mentioned, and I certainly agree when we get kind of stuck in, in this place and we can't find a way out and then things keep building and building and building and we get away from our root and we keep uplifting and and making ourselves, you know, so stressed and thinking, we forget that the only way to change our reality is inside of us, right? And so that's what this reminder is, just remembering that we have the power to do so. And it is as simple as flipping a switch. And sometimes getting up to touch that switch is the hardest thing. Yeah, but if we can push past that, become aware, ground ourselves, you know, what that does is it really ga- gives us a sense of security, confidence, you know, all these words that we, we strive for in this world, uh, in this life, because through having that security, to me, a sense of security and knowing ourselves, being able to change our reality, remembering that we have the power to do so, nothing gives more calm and peace. Nothing. It just doesn't. Mm-hmm. Because when you start to gain that and you start to build that foundation for yourself and you start to become that much more rooted, it's so much harder, Casey, to have people knock you off, you know, um, yes. knock, you, knock you from that or knock you, uproot you, let's say. Um, and that's really important because yes, <laughs> I can certainly say that the number of times if I really sat down to think how many times that probably happens in the day, it's probably a lot, you know, but it's up to, and I'll speak for myself, for example, it's up for me in that day, whether that's going to now ruin my entire day, which will inevitably affect my family, my children, myself, or if I'm going to stay grounded, take a breath, realize that I have the choice to make a correct decision or not. I have the choice to change my reality right now. And this is how I'm going to go about doing that. Um, and then you just gain a sense of calm, peace and strength that I, I don't know what else can give you that. Yeah. And I think it's also important to point out that like that, at least for me, I like, it's a process. So I think especially it's a process changing your external circumstances, even changing your internal perspective. Cause I think some of those old habits or our, um, you know, our tendency for the, what was it? The dochi. So being kind of just right. all drunk on our, on our thoughts, like those are, those can be really like deep rooted and very habitual. And it's like hard to break away from that. So to even recognize like, okay, this is gonna, this is a process. So like, like we said, like, oh, you can flip the switch and change, you know, your reality and your perspective on things, but you also have to like, get up off the couch first yes. and then take a step it's the and truth. Then take another step and then lift your arm out and all these like steps that lead up to actually flipping the switch. And so I think there's an element of um, practice and trust there that, yes. that you are making progress, even though you might not be seeing it yet, like in the places that you want to be. Absolutely. Absolutely. Casey, that was, um, that's perfectly said. That's exactly, that's exactly it. And also adding in element of because it certainly has to do with this. And so not to have another whole hour long at this moment in time, (laughs) hopefully we do have many more times to talk together, but it also involves thinking greater than yourself. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. To me, that's a very powerful, that's why I say gratitude. There's something I speak of often called earning, which is not a word you hear all the time, but when you, when you earn in your life, you know, we do things to help our own self, to make sure that our health is good, to make sure that we're good people, that we start to know ourselves, all the things that we just talked about. But there's another aspect to this, which, which goes along with the, you know, leaving a legacy of goodness. It's about also giving to others, you know, and, and earning in life comes from giving to others. It's a funny thing, <laughs> right? And through that, that's where we gain our wisdom. That's where we gain that confidence, that security, that purpose. Um, and that is really what I think is, is also a very important piece to this whole puzzle, our purpose of what, of, of how we are affecting everything around us. Um, and certainly that has a lot to do with our reality, right? So, mm-hmm. so yes, definitely. Yes. Um, all right. So next we need to be a vessel of wisdom. 
Um, I love how you, you point out the difference between like wisdom and, and knowledge. So very important. talk a little very bit about, yeah, right. About <laughs> right. So wisdom, a uh, very, a very interesting way that I have found it to be broken down is very Confucian. You know, you need both in life. That's just the truth. It's the balance. It's the yin and yang of everything, right? Knowledge is something we can memorize. It's something we read in a book. We gain so much knowledge in this life, you know, how to work on a computer, how to fix, you know, our house, <laughs> how to, it's all the things we memorize and learn, but wisdom is your experience, right? Wisdom is what you learn as you live. That's why we say, you know, those who, who have reached a certain age, they have, they, no matter whether they, they mean to or not, they have gained a lot of wisdom in their life simply by being here for that number, that number of years. And we can certainly expedite our wisdom by being able to to do all the things that we're talking about, expanding ourselves, being connected, really keeping our mind open, our perspective open, and then wisdom, we keep building that wisdom. And so that's the difference. Wisdom is exactly what becomes habit. It's our experience. It's learned through our action and our experience, whereas knowledge is memorization. And like I said, it's important to have both in this life. That's just the truth. But I think a lot of times, a lot more is given to knowledge in our Western world um, and mm -hmm. really in the world in general right now, I think I could say. But we have to always balance with that, that understanding of that experience, because that's really where, you know, life comes into play. Yes. And that's where no, we're I, always open. I'm sorry. I, I love that. Cause like, even with, all right. So like, even with these keys, so, you know, I could, like you said, I could memorize these and then I have like the knowledge of them and right. I, I might know them, but right. I don't know them on like a deep level like it's 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 intellectual knowing but not like just full body soul spirit like i just know this to be true so that kind of goes back to understanding it it's a process even when it comes to like this type of what i would call like a like spiritual work is it takes time and practice and experience to fully like absorb all of it to the point where you just where it becomes part of your your rooted system Absolutely. Absolutely. And, 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 you know, it's not fully ever. <laughs> That's the thing we're going to do this, well, you yeah. know, <laughs> right. uh, and, and certainly I don't, mean, I certainly don't mean to correct you, Casey, but, but that's exactly right. You, it was, it's so much that way. Um, and sometimes I say that because sometimes I, I I'll speak for myself. It can feel that way. Like, Oh goodness, I really want to totally embody this. And then I have to remind myself, no, that's not even possible <laughs> because right. I'm going, I can totally embody it, but it's a constant process in that manner. And, and, but yes, that's exactly, exactly correct. It's, um, it's just, uh, it, the bridge between learning and earning, right? So we have to combine both of those and that's how we really live a life that is, yes, just more deep and purposeful and always moving and always growing and expanding. I love it. Okay. And so then the last one, I love this one too. Um, although I think I also struggle with this one. Um, work in harmony with your surroundings. So yes. what do you mean by that? So this goes into how I mentioned the Tao before. To me, this is a very, like, uh, this is the Tao, right? So the universe exists and we are a part of this universe, whether it be the environment around us, whether it be people around us, um, uh, whether it be our own selves, we have to create harmony within ourselves first, our condition, right? Our organ systems, making everything function. And it keeps kind of becoming like a uh, macrocosm, it keeps coming out from us and how we, how we work in harmony with our surroundings. Right. And so that's just so important because once again, it goes back to remembering that, that we have the choice to make the decisions, how we, how we relate to everything around us, but always remembering that we are a part of a much bigger thing, <laughs> a much bigger universe that has existed here way before we got here and will continue to exist much, much longer after we leave. And that's a very humbling place, but it's also a place that I find you can be the most comforting. It's a very funny thing, you know, in moments of my life where it has been very overwhelming, in moments where I find a lot of, find myself in a very challenging situation, to me, one of the most powerful things is if when I sit down and take a, take a moment to think about that, you know, this is not, first of all, this is, I'm, I'm this, I'm this small piece I do believe, as I said before, the smallest piece can make a huge difference, but I'm a small piece in this, in this working place, in this universe. And I think that really helps us to take ourselves out of it, lifts us out of, particularly in a hard situation, it kind of lifts us out of that moment in time that might be overwhelming, that might be too much, 
right? And and to me, the next step is finding that gratitude. Mm -hmm. So and that's where a lot of that harmony comes from, that perspective and that gratitude. I am I'm part of this bigger piece. I'm so grateful to be here. I'm so grateful to have my life, to have people around me that I love and that love me. I'm so grateful to have certain opportunities that that's up to me to work towards getting <laughs> and achieving, mm -hmm. you know, but um that to me is how you work in harmony with your surroundings, is just knowing that you're a part of a whole. Yeah, and I think this one it this is one that culture and society almost go against because there's a lot of um like we're not comfortable being uncomfortable. So it's like you always you're always trying to like push through something or force something to happen or like we're talking about before being like super attached to a goal so like you keep pushing and pushing even if you know life is kind of putting up every single roadblock and it's like we think that is the definition of success to just like push and force our way through and then and that goes back to finding that balance between like working towards something and the fluidity and all that but i think also it's that again, taking that pause and like sitting and thinking, okay, like whatever's happening in your life, right. like this is happening for a reason. Like it's here to yes. show me something like this, this it's teaching me something. And then if you can find that lesson or that opportunity for growth or the opportunity to practice, um, you know, compassion or empathy or whatever it may be, then, then there's the good in it. So then there's the, the gratitude yes. and it's just, it's, I don't know. It's another tough one. Just as like, your days go and things get busy and things get stressful and like life happens to constantly, no matter what you're going through, have that check-in to be like, all right, this is here to show me something. Right. Um, and then pay attention to what it's showing you. And it might be showing you actually your path is to go another way, or, um, it could be showing you something that's more like internal work. Um, but just, just that pause to even think about rather than fight reality. Absolutely. I mean, it's a never ending cycle. And when you think of that, you know, at least that's my firm belief, it's a never ending cycle. <laughs> you know, yeah. we are a part of it. And how, whatever our, that, of course, like can extend, you know, what our part is, if we when we leave this earth, where we came before, that's a whole other conversation. But in and oh, of yeah. itself, it's a constant cycle, you know, um, mm -hmm. regardless of our beliefs, it's, it's never ending, it keeps going. And so what is our what is our place in this, this world and this life that we are in? you know, and remembering that everything that surrounds us is in us. That's something my mentor used to tell me. And it's something I think about a lot. And it's not even something I can tell you, well, Casey, this is what this means. But when you stop and you think about that, everything that surrounds you is in you. Meaning, one way of explaining that, you have all the answers within. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. we look, we, we strive so much and there's nothing wrong with, you know, striving to find you know, thing of purpose, finding teachings, finding good things to put into our body. At the end of the day, we have all, we know what is good for us. You know, if we start to clear away, purify ourselves, become aware, become connected, just remember that, that every, every answer is inside of us. You know, we don't always have to look outwards. And that's the beautiful part. Again, that is, you know, as we talked about meditation, that's one way to describe proper meditation and why we do it. The purpose of it is to look inside because sometimes the greatest answer, pretty much always, actually, the greatest answer will come from within us, because that's what that's where we connect to ourselves, to the world around us, to the people around us, and so that's the most important thing. And really, at the end of the day, to me, all of this—if I were to sum it up into one phrase—if you said, Janelle, what, if you if you just told me in one sentence, you know, how, how do you what do you think the best way to live life can be? And and I've found myself lately saying, just be natural. You know, it's such an important thing. Just be natural. Oh, that and that fits just means, on so many levels. Right? And it's such, again, it's like, um, it's the word sometimes that I have thought about a lot because I do get asked these questions <laughs> and I'm grateful for that. It makes me think of these things more often than, than maybe if I didn't have the, these chance, these opportunities to be with people such as yourself, Casey. And I certainly have gratitude, but, but right, that's really what it comes down to. Be natural in this world, you know, move from your heart doesn't mean you can't be smart. doesn't mean you can't be sharp. I like being all those things. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I like growing my businesses and doing things and being out in the world. But at the end of the day, I just don't feel rooted. I don't feel grounded. I don't feel connected if I'm not moving from my heart, if not, not being natural with the way of life um, and the Tao. And that's really what I think it all comes down to. Oh, I love it. That is absolutely the perfect note to end on. 
thank you so much for coming on. Tell everybody where they can um, find you, your work, follow you so that they can look out for the book and, and all that good stuff. Absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me, Casey. It has been wonderful spending this time with you. Um, certainly people can find me on my website, which is JanelleKim.com. Janelle is spelled J-E-N-E-L-L-E, Kim.com. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, certainly working to grow my um, grow my presence on social media. It is important to me, um, which is not always so easy to do, but I'm Dr. Yep. Janelle M. <laughs> Kim. Um, there's an M in between there, my middle name. Um, and then, uh, I also, you can find more information about my lab at jbkwellnesslabs.com. So those are some great place to places to where we can stay connected. Awesome. Thank you so much. This was just, this was actually the, the exact conversation I needed to have today. This was like a big check-in moment, even just for myself. So I, I very much appreciate that. Thank you, Casey. Thank you very much. I do. I, I appreciate you. Okay. That'll do it for this week. Thank you again for listening. Make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss all the incredible conversations that we have coming up on the show. You can follow the podcast on the socials on Instagram and Facebook at the better you podcast. If you have feedback for me, you can reach me at the better you podcast at gmail.com. And as always, I ask my biggest favor. If you have been enjoying the show that you help spread the word by either sending it to a couple friends, posting on your socials, or leaving the podcast a rating and writing a short review on whatever platform you are listening. That really helps me tremendously. And I will thank you. Thank you. Thank you for it. All right. Have a wonderful day and a wonderful week. 